In this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the use of one of uh, Brian O'Connor's um, parallel analysis uh, uh, syntax files. And uh, basically, what I have right here is uh, his web page that's opened up. Uh, it's actually found right here. And um, you'll notice that over here under SPSS and SAS and MATLAB, there are various files. And I'm going to mainly focus in on the use of this particular file right here, parallel.spss. Uh, basically, these are uh, different files that allow you to carry out um, essentially um, uh, parallel analysis and Bellisser's uh, map test. But we're going to mainly focus in on uh, parallel analysis using this file right here. Uh, this file right here can be used uh, also to carry out parallel analysis when you're using SPSS. Um, essentially, what it would allow you to do is to plot uh, the uh, eigenvalues from your raw data against um, the randomly generated eigenvalues. But it's a little tricky to use, and so I want to keep this fairly simple and just essentially generate the, uh, the uh, eigenvalues, uh, the uh, randomly generated eigenvalues, and then compare it against the eigenvalues from my data. So um, at any rate, the data set that we have, this is actually um, data that I've been using in several videos. This is uh, data that is um, based on questionnaire responses coming from items from the International Personality Item Pool and from this uh, particular uh, scale um, that we have right here, the CAT Personality Disorder Scales. And I have items that are measuring affective lability, anger, uh, anxiousness, uh, depressiveness, uh, grandiosity, and also health anxiety. So um, at any rate, we have our data file right here. And basically what happens with parallel analysis is that what you essentially do is you know you have your original correlation matrix and then you um, in a nutshell you derive uh, eigenvalues uh, based on that original correlation matrix and then you're essentially comparing those eigenvalues against randomly generated eigenvalues so um, to demonstrate uh, this process first of all I want to show you how to uh, just uh, utilize this particular uh, program right here to uh, generate random eigenvalues. So I'm going to click on parallel.sps.sps right here. And uh, you could also download the file, but I'm going to start off just by showing you uh, this is a web page that uh, he's uh, uh, set up. And uh, what we can do is actually just kind of copy everything out of this web page right here. And, uh, you know, I've got my data file open, and I can just go to File and then go to New uh, and then go to Syntax right here and then just uh, copy B or you know basically paste it in and so you can see it's already set up for use all we have to do is enter uh, you know our specifications up here uh, in this part of the uh, syntax so you'll notice that uh, the first part of the specifications is uh, the number of cases um, so the number of cases in my data set the number of listwise cases is actually uh, 463 and so I'm actually uh, going to uh, type in 463 um, and then the number of variables in the data set uh, the number of variables that I actually have in the data set is 39 um, and then so you can see right here compute number of data sets and so the number of data sets by default is 100 I could raise this if I want but essentially the, the basic idea is we're generating random data um, uh, or essentially random uh, 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 random uh, correlation matrices uh, for variables where essentially those matrices are, are assuming that there's no relationship and then computing the eigenvalues for um, all um, you know factors or components uh, for each uh, matrix and then essentially we're compiling that information across those uh, those simulated matrices in order to generate our um, our final random eigenvalues and um, and uh, percentiles so you can see right here that um, we have the percent set at uh, 95 uh, and that's actually a, a pretty conventional standard uh, when using parallel analysis so you can see down here it says specify the desired uh, kind of parallel analysis where one is par equal principal components analysis two is equal to principal axis or common factor analysis so I'm gonna actually just start with principal components analysis so I'm gonna change this to one and then uh, we're ready to go so what I'll do is I'll click edit and then select all and then hit the little green button and it runs so you can see that we have our um, our output so you can see it says random data eigenvalues 
And so the root is essentially referring to each individual component. So this is going to, you know, it equals, um, it goes all the way down to 39, which is equal to the number of, uh, of the original measured variables that we're working from. We had specified 39 variables in the, uh, uh, that we're working with. So the means, this is basically, you know, uh, computed um, by taking the eigenvalue. So eigenvalue, you know, the first eigenvalue for the f uh, over 100 matrices and computing the average for that first eigenvalue across those matrices. So that's the mean. And then the percentile is the 95th percentile of those eigenvalues that's computed over the uh, 100 um, simulated data sets. Then the same goes for uh, component two right here. So this is the average eigenvalue for component two across those 100 matrices, whereas this is the 95th percentile and so forth. So um, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the randomly generated eigenvalues that we have right here um, against uh, the eigenvalues uh, from our raw data. So what I'll do is I'm going to run uh, the analysis, go to dimension reduction factor, and then uh, essentially um, highlight or click on all these, move them over, and under extraction uh, I'm going to, uh, you'll notice that it's already set for method for uh, principal components analysis. And I can just pretty much leave this alone, or if I want to in, in, invoke uh, the screen plot, uh, I can do that as well. But I'm going to click on a continue and then on OK. And so now when I scroll down, I get over in uh, these columns right here, these are all uh, the uh, principal components, you know, the eigenvalues, percentage of variance accounted for, cumulative percentage for uh, all 39 uh, components that have been extracted. And you'll see over here in this column right here, these are essentially uh, the, um, you know, this is based on uh, the Kaiser criterion. So we're really not gonna pay attention to this right here. We really wanna mainly pay attention to the eigenvalues that are in this column uh, here. And so we're gonna compare these observed eigenvalues against those that were randomly uh, generated using uh, O'Connor's uh, syntax. So let's start off by just looking at the eigenvalues for component one, component two, component three, component four. So component four, uh, you know, it's 1.748. And so what we're going to look to see is up to component four, you know, do we have eigenvalues from the, that were randomly generated that, um, you know, that fall above or, or, or whether they're fall falling below. So I'll scroll up here and you can see that using the 95th percentile, all of these values uh, right here, all the way one, two, three, four, all of these values are all falling below the corresponding eigenvalues from the observed data. So at a minimum, we have four uh, components that should be retained. Now let's look at the fifth one and the sixth one. The fifth one had uh, the random eigenvalue is 1.42, the sixth one is 1.38. So now let's scroll down and look. And so you can see that uh, the fifth eigenvalue from the data is still greater than the random eigenvalue, but uh, the uh, eigenvalue for the sixth one is actually falling below. So what that tells us then um, is that uh, we should retain essentially a five component solution and um, essentially after that we, we reject uh, you know, any other type of solution. So that's using the parallel analysis using uh, principal uh, components. Um, you know, and I'm just kind of looking at our output, um, you know, that's, you know, that's basically it right there. Um, okay, so now let's look at it using uh, principal axis uh, factoring. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is go back to my syntax file, and uh, instead of using one, we're just going to type in a two right here. And uh, we'll just uh, click on edit, select all, and then run. And so now, you know, we get, uh, you know, our, our mean eigenvalues and 95th percentile for the eigenvalues. And then you'll, you'll scroll down below and you'll notice that there's a little, you know, there's some notes uh, which are pretty handy. So it just says compare the, the uh, random data eigenvalues to the real data eigenvalues uh, obtained from a common factor analysis in which the number of factors equals the number of variables and so forth. Um, so, you know, that's basically all there is to it. He also says, uh, that, um, you know, t uh, parallel analysis of adjusted correlation matrices uh, with uh, squared multiple correlations on the diagonal tend to indicate more factors than warranted. And he also suggests then that, you know, you might look at other uh, approaches in order to uh, identify the number of um, factors um, with this kind of procedure. So principal axis factoring involves uh, incorporating squared multiple correlations in the principal diagonal of the correlation matrix, and so that's where we can run into potential problems. 
Uh, there is also a note that just says that principal components analysis um, are often used to determine uh, the number of uh, common factors, and this is a default in many uh, pro packages and so forth. And so uh, just kind of pay attention to the little note there. So uh, that is another option. If we if it looks like we're probably going to end up over factoring using uh, the uh, principal axis uh, parallel analysis using the principal axis approach, then we might go back and still use the principal components uh, analysis as, a, as an alternative. So with that said, we'll we'll just go back to our data, our, our syntax file, and we're gonna we've already specified principal axis. So I'm just now going to uh, run the selection. Oh, we are actually we just did that. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, next we'll just go to analyze dimension reduction and then factor, and then under extraction, we'll click under method. We'll go to principal axis factoring. Now um, what? Uh, just kind of keep in mind that um, with this particular rule invoked right here, uh, what's going to happen is is that um, the the program will actually run the principal axis factor analysis, forcing um, the number of factors based on the Kaiser criterion that's applied to the principal components analysis. Uh, essentially, when you run the analysis, um, what you'll notice is uh, basically uh, to the left. This is from a PCA right here. And on the right, this is uh, the principal axis factor analysis. And uh, the application of the uh, Kaiser criterion, basically uh, uh, retaining those factors with eigenvalues greater than 1, is actually applied based on these eigenvalues here. And then it's forced onto this solution right here. So um, to get around that problem, uh, you know, what you can do is essentially increase the number of, um, you know, basically force a number of factors uh, higher, uh, you know, so we have 39 variables. Uh, we could force up to 38 uh, factors. We can't actually force 39. So uh, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll, I'll just force uh, 38 factors and then click on continue and then on OK. So now we have uh, the eigenvalues uh, that we, and the, we want to pay attention to those that are in this column right here. So these are the eigenvalues where we force essentially a 38 factor solution um, and then we compare these eigenvalues against those in, that are randomly generated. Uh, just to kind of speed things up, I'm just going to rerun this again so that we can just kind of go up and down. Uh, so you can see right here that uh, you know the 95th percentile eigenvalues are really very low and even they, they become negative uh, down here. So uh, and what you'll notice actually if you uh, run this yourself you'll notice that um, you know really in most cases you know even all the way down into the 20s uh, and the 30s uh, you can see that all those eigenvalues from the data are uh, exceeding their corresponding eigenvalues so that actually suggests then that uh, probably the principal components analysis approach is a better approach to identifying the number of uh, factors so you know, kind of going back to the the website here, I just want to kind of point out again that um, you know, if you wanted to, you could also just download this. You could save this to uh, a file, like on you know, I've already saved it to my desktop uh, under a factor analysis uh, uh, folder. Uh, so this is it right here. I've just gone ahead and saved it. And so what you could do uh, in that case is, um, you know, if you if you didn't want to copy and paste and, and that sort of thing, what we could do is just essentially open it up. Uh, so if I'm, you know, if I have the um, data set, I could just open up syntax file, and there it is. And when I click on open, there it is. And so then I can make my changes um, right here as as before. So you can do it either way. Uh, I like to kind of keep a copy on my drive uh, just to kind of open it up. It saves me the, a little bit of time just going to the website. Uh, but either way works um, fine. So uh, that uh, concludes this demonstration.